Hey everybody, this is Josh here, the Greybeard of Green Beret. I want to talk to you real quickly about a handful of knots that you should know to make this system work well for you. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's talk real quickly about some rope terminology. We've got the shorter end of the rope, we're going to call the working end. The longer end of the rope, we're going to call the standing end. A bite is a doubled section of rope that doesn't cross over itself, whereas a loop is if it crosses itself. So the first knot we're going to concern ourselves with is the bowline, and specifically it's an end of the line bowline. So there are several different ways to tie it. This is just the way I tie it. If you know a different way and it's quicker for you, go ahead and use that. But for the sake of people that don't know how to tie this knot, I'm going to show you my method. So I pull up a section of rope, a section of line, section of cordage, and establish myself a working end. What I'm going to do is form a loop, and that loop, I want to have the section, the working end, on top of the standing end. Once I have that, from the working end, I'm going to take a bite and come up from bottom to top through that loop, forming another bite. Now if you can see what I have here, I've got what's called a clean side where there's no knot and a dirty side where the knot is starting to form. With the clean side to my right, I'm going to take the working end from my chest out and go through that bite, pulling myself out enough of a tail to put a security knot in. I'm then going to make a bite with that, and my bowline is all but complete except for a little bit of tightening and dressing. But I've still got that loop here, a bite here and a bite here. Once I pull on the working end, all of that is going to slip over itself and create my bowline. The way I know I have a bowline is I've got a fixed loop that has a teardrop shaped bite right here with the working end coming out on the center section, center side of the loop. I've got a teardrop shape with a cross locking bar and I'm going to use that working in to tie a security knot which is just a simple overhand. Take the rope, go around, form a loop, and then tuck that running end, tuck that working end inside that loop and dress it down. Now I've got my bowline with my security knot. One more time. Pull up the length of cordage. Make a loop. Push a bite up through that loop. Clean side, dirty side. Take the shorter working end, go through. Form another bite, leaving enough tail to tie your security knot. Hold this, pull this. Check your knot, fix loop, teardrop shape, cross locking bar. Running end is in the center of the loop, working end is coming through the center of that teardrop shape. Tie my security knot by going around one leg of that loop and then coming back through. And tighten that down. End of the line bowling. Let's take a look at a trucker's hitch. And what I've got is that end of the line is actually tied to another an anchor and I'm going to anchor it 
to this side now. So to establish the trucker's hitch, the first thing I have to know how to tie is an overhand slip. To tie the overhand slip, I'm just going to make a loop and then push a bite through that, just like I was starting the bowline. And it's very important on the trucker's hitch that my fixed side, my dirty side that has the knot in it, is going towards the already established anchor point. And the slip side is going to be going towards the near side anchor. If not, when I pull tension on this, it's just going to slip and not tighten the actual line that I'm trying to tighten. Once I have that established, I'm going to come around the back side of the anchor. And I'm coming back to that loop. I'm going to come through the loop that's formed by that overhand slip once. Then I'm going to come through a second time, forming a round turn. This is a round turn inside that loop. And what I'm going to do here is establish what's called a rolling hitch. So as I pull tension, that hitch is going to tighten on itself. And it's going to hold. With that rolling hitch capturing that tension, I don't have to sit here and hold it. So, what I so while this is holding tension, I'm just going to secure it with a half hitch. And you can do the half hitch over both lines or you can do it over one. Normally for a half hitch, all I have to do is come over and then come back through. And then pull that towards what I'm trying to secure with that half hitch. Normally if I do a round turn, I'll do two half hitches. Which forms a clove hitch. For this application, instead of doing a simple half hitch where I just come over and come back through that loop that I created to form a half hitch, I want something that's going to come out quickly. So I'm going to do what's called a half hitch on a bite. So I'm going to come over and rather than pull the entire end through like that, I'm just going to pull a bite through like this. and tighten that against the knot that I'm trying to secure. What that does is establish a quick release so that now I just have to pull on this and that half hitch is out. So I'll show you that all again. Alright, so cheating towards my original anchor point I'm going to establish an overhand slip. All I have to do is form a loop and then push a bite through that loop. Much like the bowline, I've got a clean side where my slip knot is and a dirty side where my overhand knot is. Again it's important that the knotted side, the dirty side where the overhand is, is going towards your original anchor point. And the slip needs to be going towards your new anchor point. I'll come around the near side anchor or the new anchor. And then I'll bring the end of my line through that loop that I've created with the overhand slip. Then I'm going to come through a second time to form a round turn. What we're doing here is establishing what's called a rolling hitch. I'm going to pull tension on that and as I'm pulling tension that rolling hitch is going to roll over itself and it'll capture all of that tension so that I don't have to sit here and hold it. Now I'm going to secure that with a half hitch on a bite. 
So to make the half hitch on the bite, simply throw it over to create a loop. And I'm going to pull my bite through that loop that I just created. And then tighten that down. Now to take that out, I've just got to pull on the end to pull that bite out. Pull towards the original anchor point, which removes that rolling hitch. And then pull this way to pop out the overhand slip. The next knot I want to show you is going to be what's called a fisherman's knot. And essentially it is two overhand knots that are opposing. So what I've got to do is take my two ends and have them running in opposite directions. One end is pointing towards the right, one end is pointing towards the left. I'm going to use one end and tie an overhand on the other leg of this loop that I'm creating. So tie an overhand, I'll come around just like we did in the bowline, form a loop, and then bring the tail of that running end back through. So I've created an overhand. Now I'm going to come to the opposite side, or I can flip it over and tie an overhand around the other leg. Make a loop, back through, pull it tight. Now I've established two opposing overhands. And you'll know that you have it right because the tails of the working ends are going to be facing in opposite directions and it will slide on itself. This is also called a fisherman's knot or a necklace knot. And when you pull tight, those two overhands hold tension against each other. One more time. My two ends are facing each other. Cross them so that they are pointing in opposite directions. Tie an overhand on one side. Just make a loop going around the other leg and then come back through that loop. Pull tight. Now we're going to tie the same thing where we're tying one end around the opposite leg. I'll flip it in my hand, come around form a loop, come back through that loop, and I've got my fisherman's knot, which is two opposing overhands. With that loop, I'm going to bring the knotted end up through, and that basically creates what's called a lark's head or a girth hitch depending on how big what you're tying it on is. But I've got a loop that's going around and then both of my tails of this loop are on the inside and this is a locking bar being created right here. So if I tie that down now I've got two wraps with a cross locking bar and that is a lark's head in this case because this is a thin diameter. If this was a larger diameter, the same thing would be called a girth hitch. Same knot. Now, in order to establish a prusik though, instead of having one wrap, or instead of having two wraps, I need at least four wraps. So all I have to do is come back around, forming another loop, and now I've got four wraps. You'll notice that on these wraps, they go from outside 
to end as we're coming down towards the portion, the loop that's sticking down. And that's important. You don't want these crossing over each other. And your locking bar has to capture all of those wraps. So once it's there, I can start twisting and dressing this down. And now I've got a four wrap Prusik. And what this is designed to do is you take a line that is of a smaller diameter and tie it to a line that's of a larger diameter. And whenever tension is pulled on that, the Prusik actually holds and keeps it from slipping. If you want to move it, you can simply unlock this locking bar to take some of that tension off. You can slide this knot wherever you need it to go on the line and simply lock that locking bar again and it will hold wherever you put it. Now because I'm using paracord for both of these and they're the same diameter, what I would do to make it more secure is instead of having four, I would take it over again and create a six wrap Prusik. And again, it's important that these wraps go from outside to inside so that the locking bar can capture every portion of it and there's no slippage in the knot. Then as I twist and lock, I've now got even more hold on this line. If I want to move it, simply unlock the locking bar, slide it wherever I want it to go and relock it. So that is the Prusik knot. Let's take a look at this one more time. Create a loop over whatever it is you're trying to tie the Prusik on. Pull it through itself once and you have a lark's head. Pull it through twice to create a four wrap Prusik. Pull it through a third time to create a six wrap Prusik. Make sure that your loops are coming from outside to in and that the two middle loops come down to the loop that you're creating. Tighten that up ensuring that your, your locking bar is coming from the outside and capturing every one of those wraps. and tighten it down. Once again, those knots that you need to practice are the end of line bowling, the trucker's hitch, the rolling hitch, the fisherman's knot, and the Prusik. I'll see you next time.